Today, Canon have announced the brand new Canon EOS RP, a new entry level full frame camera in their mirrorless lineup. Now, if you don't have time to watch the full test today, you can pop forward to our TLDW or our Too Long Didn't Watch section. There is a link in the description below taking you to exactly that point in the video where you can just see a quick overview of what this camera is about. However, if you want a little bit more detail, then stick around. We've come down to New Haven Harbour today. We're going to take some nice pictures. It is a bit windy, so hopefully we'll get some cool waves coming over the water break there. Take some nice images down here, and then we're going to talk a little bit more about the spec this afternoon. gonna lose my hat at this right so already I'm using some of the features of this camera so we've got the flip out screen on the EOS RP just the same as the EOS R which a lot of people will like I really like these now the EOS R made me like it and it's continually useful on this so straight away already I needed to lean over here I don't want to get too close to that edge so being able to use that flip out screen and not have to get down on the floor over there is really really handy We've also got the Touch AF. Again, if you're using the screen in this bright weather, it's easy to touch, move your focus points. Because this is the entry level version, we don't have a joystick or anything like that to move your points about. So being able to do it on the screen is super nice and quick. So we've got a lot of salt spray coming onto the lenses here. Try to keep it clean as much as possible, but salt spray is a nightmare. It really smears up. So I think we're gonna move from here in a minute, but there are some nice waves coming up to the lighthouse. So what I might do is just stick on a 70 to 200 in a second, try and get a little bit closer. I've got the RF 24 105 on here, which is obviously a native lens for the EOS RP. But remember, you do have the adapter as well. So you can set up a way smaller setup here. You can put on the adapter and stick on, for example, a little 35 mil and I'll try that later. So it doesn't have to be this big. So I know I said I was going to make the kit a bit smaller but actually I'm about to make it way bigger we've got the 70 to 200 here I've put the mount adapter on as you can see that adds about an, uh, with the cap off probably just under an inch to the length of your lens um, but it does mean you can put some really nice L glass on to your RP you can also of course put on EFS lenses if you want to that does give you the 1.6 times crop you'd expect and you can set that in the menu as well. We have got a nice big lens hood on here, so hopefully salt from the sea won't be as much of a problem. Now I've got the 70 to 200 on. I've been able to do a little bit with the tracking focus just on some seagulls flying into the waves. It seems to be pretty effective, to be honest. So we have got touch and drag on the RP. Just means that because we don't have a joystick to move our AF points about, Obviously, when you're using the screen, you can just touch and move them. Whereas when your eye is to the viewfinder, you can put your thumb here and just move your AF points like that. Now, you can turn that off. Um, the only reason I've got it on is because look at that lighthouse. It's so bright. I can't really focus using the screen. I need to be in the viewfinder. So it just means I can use my thumb to select my AF points. But as I say, a lot of people that are noisy can turn it off as well. So <laughs> it's very wavy. So I've been using the continuous uh, burst mode on this. In AI Servo, you can get four frames per second. And in single shot, you can get five frames per second. And that's up to 50 RAWs. So 50 14-bit RAWs at five frames per second if you're using continuous in AFS. The sun is directly in front of us now. So we're getting some really nice sort of silhouetted shots with the waves coming over. We're gonna walk around the other side of the wall now. So hopefully we should get a little bit nicer lighting against that side of the wall and have some actual colour in our, in our images. Photographers get them everywhere in my shop. So we've walked around the arm now and we've got even less protection than we did the other side. It's incredibly windy, but that does give these unbelievable waves behind me, which is just fantastic photographically. I've still got the 70s 200 on and with the continuous frame rate, I've got to say, I've not run out of buffer once. I've filled my card. But um, I know they say 50 rolls, but I've just been continually shooting and it's, it's holding up really, really well. So, because you don't ever want to miss one of these, it might just be like the perfect one going over the wall. So I think we're going to walk along a little bit further in a second and try and get some hitting back at the lighthouse. Um, but they do seem to be coming into this corner more than anywhere else. So I think this is where we'll see the most dramatic bits. You know, I have no idea how these are coming out because it's so bright. <laughs> even though this is quite a nice bright screen and viewfinder i mean this is just you can't see a thing the power behind the waves is crazy and sometimes they go from being so far out to just absolutely coming right up the beach i've seen a lot of these photographers sort of running back 
must be careful when you're doing this sort of photography. If anyone lives near the coast and is doing this, or if you don't live near the coast and you happen to be there in a storm, don't get too close because you can get another shot, but you can't, you can't do much if you're dead, so. Just waiting for a nice big one to come up the uh, steps over there. Get a nice splash. It looks like there's one coming in now, actually. Okay, I officially have enough wave pictures forever. On our way back to the studio to talk through the specs of the RP, I've put on the RF 35mm, which is the native lens for the system. As you can see, very small with this lens on. We're going to be heading around Lewis, which is a little market town just outside of where our studio is, just to take a few little street shots with it. One thing I have noticed between this RP and the EOS R is that I always really like that touch bar that the EOS R has, but as this is a more sort of entry level model into full frame, it doesn't have that because it's a, a smaller model. So there are some differences. I know a lot of people sort of look at these and go, oh, well, you know, they're both full frame. I might as well get this one, but this is suitable definitely for a different type of photographer than the EOS R. So we are now using the dual pixel CMOS AF to track me as I walk about. Not many autofocus systems are super reliable for video, but Canon's dual pixel CMOS AF is certainly the best out there. The EOS RP has that. Now, we've tried it a few times here. It's not as reliable as something like maybe the EOS R, but this is the entry level full frame and it's not built for doing pro video all the time. However, saying that, if you're going on holiday, the dual pixel CMOS AF is working easily well enough to be relying on it for your nice holiday videos or maybe if you're traveling around you want to make a little travel video as you go, this seems to be working all right. You can also turn on the eye tracking as well, which we have, so if I get a little bit closer, it should pick up my eyes. I'm getting nods from behind the camera, yeah, it's worked. Great times. Okay, so now we're shooting in full HD, 1080p, rather than in 4K. So there's no crop now. And as you can see, I can be way more vigorous with that continuous autofocus. Even up close, it's a lot more effective than in the cropped 4K mode. So if you are trying to use the dual pixel CMOS AF in the RP, it does make more sense to use it in full HD if you are shooting a subject that's got a little bit more vigorous movement. Slow motion is something that is lacking a little in the EOS RP. So in the EOS R, we have 120 frames per second only at 720p, which isn't great, but at least you have the option for it. On the RP, you don't have that at all. You can only go up to a maximum of 60 frames per second, obviously, if you're shooting NTSC. If you're shooting PAL in the UK, that's going to be 50 frames per second, and that's only in 1080, so that's only in Full HD. So it doesn't have a lot of you know, give when it comes to slow motion. We're gonna do a little bit of those 50 frames per second shots just so you can see what they look like. But this is really more stills orientated than it is video. When it comes to stills, it's more of sort of like a mirrorless 6D, if you like. So let's talk a little bit more about the specs of the EOS RP. So obviously it's a full frame mirrorless from Canon. It's a 26.2 megapixel sensor in there. We've got the Digic 8 processor giving us those beautiful Canon colors. 4,779 AF areas, and we've got the dual pixel CMOS AF, which is awesome. We've got the five axis image stabilization here, so it means you can shoot in, for stills at least, slightly lower light, and just be able to still manage with slower shutter speeds, because it's pretty effective. In terms of the body, it's super nice and light, really light, actually. And I've got the big 24105 RF lens on this at the moment. You know, you can use this with a lot smaller lenses. When I was using it with the RF 35mm earlier, that was such a super lightweight little kit. And it's not imposing at all. You even still have the fully articulated screen on there. So for this size of body, that's really nice. And actually, I've got a comparison, because this is basically, this sits in the range as an entry-level full frame. So similar to the 6D. If I pick these up side by side, we've got the 6D with a 24105 and this with a 24105. Now, as you can see, if you put them in a box side by side, 
as a square, they're not super different, but you can see there is a lot more bulk in the body of the 6D. And if you're packing a camera bag, every little helps. You know, that could be an extra couple of cleaning cloths, a spare battery, a lens pen. So it does make a difference having that little bit of extra room, especially if you're flying and you're taking these on carry on. Now, in terms of the design itself, nice big grip, which even on a small body like this, it's nice that they've put that in. We've got a single card slot in this, which is in the battery compartment. This is the battery, teeny wick. Can you even see it from there? Look at it, so small. And that means that the battery life on this, you get about 250 shots. It's not great, we know that, but it is a tiny battery, so you can probably have a few of these and it's not gonna take up much of your back. Ports wise, we have a HDMI, which is not full size. We have USB-C, we have mic and headphone port, and we have a remote as well. So. You're sort of, this is like a whole miniature system, if you like. It's not getting anything that's crazy. It hasn't got like 4K 60 or, you know, no crop or anything like that. But it does allow you to do a little bit of nice video with a bit of audio and you can listen to it back through headphones. You know, you've got the articulated screen. You've got the five axis image stabilization, that dual pixel CMOS AF. So in terms of a hybrid system that's a little bit more entry level, it works pretty well. It misses out on the things like the touch bar that the EOS R has um, and a the little bit more manual control, but that's sort of where it's aimed at. You know, it's sort of aimed at people who, if you're looking to upgrade, maybe you've got some uh, sort of APS-C size sensor, DSLR at the moment, you're looking at getting into full frame, this is a great camera for you. If you're coming out of college, you want to do something a little bit more with your photo work, maybe a little bit of videography on the side, a great camera for you. If you're traveling, we've got holiday of an absolute lifetime coming up. You shoot Canon already, you've got a few lenses, you can get this and you can stick the adapter on it and then you don't have to think about it again. It means you've got all that capability and you just put the adapter on, you can use all your current lenses. So it's a really nice little entry level way to get into full frame. This is our TLDW or too long didn't watch section for the EOS RP. Who is this aimed for? enthusiasts, people who want to get into full frame shooting. What does it compare to? Probably the 6D2, maybe the Sony a6400 and the Fuji X-T3. Even though it's APS-C size, it's a pretty similar price. Why should you care? Dual pixel CMOS AF, good focusing and low light, Canon colors and Canon lenses. What do we think? We think this is good for who it's aimed at. It's not a pro body, it doesn't have enough features and it doesn't have enough control, but it is a full frame sensor with good shooting capabilities and the ability to move on even further to other lenses or upgrade from your current kit. The EOS RP is really a baby EOS R. It has a lot of that capability that the EOS R puts forward in terms of image quality. It lacks some in design, it doesn't have all the buttons that you'd hope for and it's not a perfect camera in terms of battery life and not great video capabilities. But for stills, it has fantastic image quality. It's nice, sharp, clean, high resolution images. You have dual pixel CMOS AF, five axis image stabilization in the body. You've got such a light body as well, as well as a fully articulating screen. So if you want to get into the world of full frame mirrorless, have a little bit of video capability on the side, you know, you've got that mic port, that headphone port. This is a really nice body to take a look at. If you need any more information on the EOS RP, you can pop onto the website, there's loads of info on there. You can check out the product pages or have a look at our blog, which has loads of info too. You can also give us a call or send us an email or put a comment below and we'll try our best to get back to you with all the information that you need. Thanks for watching.